Can Derrick Henry continue to dominate the Indianapolis Colts? We'll discuss that and more on a crossover Thursday edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. For tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts and Tennessee Titans, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. This crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. I'm your host here on Locked On Colts, Zach Hicks. You guys can find me over on social media. I actually, if you guys are on YouTube, I just put Zach Hicks 2 as my name here. I just realized that. But yeah, Zach Hicks 2 on on Twitter. Zach Hicks is my name here. I'm joined my <laughs> buddy Tyler here from Locked On Titans, Tic Tac Titans there on social media. Uh, and yeah, fun start already to the show, Tyler. I just realized I <laughs> the graphic yep, there. Yep, but, yep. but how you doing, buddy? You ready to talk about Colts Titans here? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I think with the state of the division right now and with where everybody's at, there is concern, but also healthy optimism for every team in the division, no matter what has gone right or wrong going forward. And uh, I think there's a lot that the Titans and, and the Colts can build on, and they always have good games that are back and forth. I think we're going to see another one of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So getting into this first segment here, we're going to talk about the biggest story of the game for each of our teams. Obviously, all you Locked On Colts fans want me to start here, but Tyler is our guest. He's coming to Indy or his team's coming to Indy. So we're mm-hmm. going to open the floor to the Titans here. What's the biggest story for the Tennessee Titans going into this matchup? Also worth noting about coming to Indy, I've been to Lucas Oil Stadium more than any other professional sports stadium in the world. So nice. I'm well acquainted with the premises. Uh, it is a beautiful stadium. I'll say that, but that's the last positive thing I'm saying about the Colts. The rest, of, no, just kidding. But the biggest storyline for the Titans here, I think, is can you keep Derrick Henry going? So, like we're going to talk about, the Colts had some struggles in run defense last week. Um, there have been some opportunities there, and historically speaking, Derrick Henry has had a lot of success against the Colts since 2010. Derrick Henry has more 100-yard rushing games against the Colts than any other player in the NFL has had against a single opponent. So Derrick Henry has seven 100-yard rushing games. Number two is Derrick Henry against the Texans. Number three is Derrick Henry against the Jaguars. So it's not like the Colts are alone in that domination. And Derrick Henry was drafted in 2016. So there's a whole six seasons he wasn't even eligible for that. So the point is, it's a long way to say Derrick Henry has had real success against Indianapolis. um, And the Titans have been able to run the ball. Now it's a new coaching staff. So is that going to change things? Is that going to make it easier, harder? Mike Vrabel doesn't have as good of a read on what the Colts are going to do, I'm sure. Uh, That'll make things interesting. But I think the question is, Derrick Henry finally got going and had a vintage performance last week against the Bengals. That's when the Titans are obviously at their best. And if he can continue doing that against Indianapolis, then the Titans' success in other areas of the offense will be able to continue. So right now, for me, it's all about looking at Derrick Henry Because the first three weeks were a struggle, and it didn't look good. And I think part of that is the Titans' scheme on offense. Teams knowing how to play against it now. But the other side of it is, I think Derrick Henry not playing in the preseason. Same thing with Tannehill. It took him a little while to get going. The offensive line is brand new across the board, essentially. So uh, I want to know, was everybody says week one is a liar. Was week four a liar for the Titans' run game? Or can that be what they're going to be going forward with Derrick Henry looking like his old self, and then Tajay Spears adding in to help. So can the Titans keep the run game going against a team they've been able to historically run against? That's what I'm looking for is the big storyline for the Titans going forward. Yeah, and to kind of counter that, to talk about the Colts' run defense, it's kind of the same way. You know, everyone says week one is a liar, but is week four a liar for the Colts' run defense? Yeah. It has been really, really strong this year. They completely shut down the Baltimore Ravens outside of Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you do? (laughs) 
He always <laughs> runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's Lamar Jackson, but they've had a really you good are. run defense this year. They've held teams to really mm-hmm. low yards per carry. I mean, the Houston Texans in week two came into Indy, or uh, Indy went to the Houston Texans and held them to under two yards per carry in that game. And the biggest thing and that was different in week four compared to those first three weeks is DeForest Buckner was really limited. So De- DeForest Buckner barely played last week. So Kyron Williams mm-hmm. was able to not get touched until he was 25 yards down the field on most of these runs, it felt <laughs> like. True. Now, Obviously, that's a big storyline for the Colts this week is to watch DeForest Buckner's health. Will he be a full go against the Titans? Because we saw last time that Buckner was not a full go against Tennessee Titans. I think it was back yeah. in 2020 where the Titans got to like a 20-something point lead in like the first quarter, it felt like. Yeah. And it was yeah. just over from there. And that was a team that the Colts beat earlier in the season when Buckner played. So yes, he's a massive part of that run defense. And obviously, you need mm-hmm. to have all your dogs up front against the Tennessee Titans because – they are a big trench warfare team. That's actually going to get into <laughs> my biggest story is will the Colts trenches bounce back against a team that always wins the trenches? I know their offensive line hasn't mm-hmm. been great the last two years, but the Tennessee Titans, when you think of the Tennessee Titans, they're a team that's going to punch you in the face. That's what their head coach is. That's what mm-hmm. their running back is. That's what their defensive line is in particular. They're a team that's going to punch you in the face with physicality. That's how they win games. It's how they've always won games. And the Colts have had some showings in the last couple of years where they've been able to exchange blows with them and even win the game late. But for the most part, in the most recent matchups, it has been all Tennessee. Tennessee has won that physical, that physical battle. They've won on the offensive line. They've won on the defensive line and the Colts just have, have had no answers. Now go to this season, first three games of the year, the Indianapolis Colts offensive line and defensive line were winning them games. They were winning the trench battle in every game. But with injuries piling up last week and with Aaron Donald coming to town and and Sean McVay and his offensive scheme, the Colts lost a trench battle. And for the most part, they were out of this past game until Anthony Richardson did Anthony Richardson things there in the fourth quarter. But the Colts were getting their butts kicked for most of this past game on Sunday because they lost that trench battle. And that's against the the Los Angeles Rams, a good team. Don't get me wrong, a, a really solid team. But if you lose the trench battle to the Tennessee Titans, you're, you have no chance. You have no chance at all. You have to win the trench battle to beat the Tennessee Titans because that's their identity. That's what they do. So the <laughs> yeah. biggest story for the Colts is you need to bounce back in the trenches. It can't be a game like last week where the trenches don't figure it out until the fourth quarter because you'll be down by 30 by then against Tennessee Titans instead of yeah. you know down 23 and then McVay just trying to run up the gut the whole fourth quarter because he's just super conservative when it comes to that stuff. So that's the biggest story for me is the Colts' trenches just need to bounce back in this one because you just can't afford that against the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, and if you love trench warfare conversation, well, folks, do I have a next conversation topic for you. We are going to continue to look at these matchups up front, and I'm going to look at one that we're talking about the run game and run defense and all that, but in the passing game, I think the Titans can exploit something, but only if they're able to take care of business up front like we're talking about. So we're going to dive into all of that in just a moment. Before we do, though, Do want to let you guys know that today's crossover Thursday is brought to you by Prize Picks. Look, guys, Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. You don't want to go out there and play against people with a thousand different lineups, pros, and sharks, and bots, and all this. It's easier to play on fan- on Prize Picks where you can literally just play against their projections. So here's how it works. I'm going to give you some examples going into the Colts game. Anthony Richardson, one rushing touchdown. Derrick Henry. 80 rushing yards, Ryan Tannehill, two interceptions, DeAndre Hopkins, three catches. Basically, you go on prize picks and you pick two to six players and you say whether that player is going to do more or less than what the projection is. It's that simple. And if you win, you can win up to 25 times your money. Again, it is daily fantasy sports made easy. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL Use the code Locked On NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's PrizePicks.com slash Locked On NFL. Use the code Locked On NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. It's Prize Picks Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. All right, Zach, it's time. Matchups are here. We're going to keep it in the trenches. All right, 
I went first last time talking about the storylines. So I'm going to set you up here to talk about the big matchups. Before we get into it, thank you guys for making Locked On Titans and Locked On Colts your first listen each and every day. We're going to talk matchups here, but we're making our predictions at the end of the show. So make sure that you stick around for that. But Zach, you let us know, been focusing on, on the trenches here. Is that where you're staying for your first matchup to watch? You know, Tyler, because you got me so going in that first segment about trench warfare, I actually moved my trenches up to segment one. So I'm going to move my segment one go. down to segment two. Okay. And it's kind of what I say for every one of these crossovers. I'm kind of getting pre- predictable and getting a little bit boring at this point. But it's always Anthony Richardson. It's Anthony yeah. Richardson versus his own development. Anthony Richardson versus his own inconsistencies and high flashes and stuff. But mm-hmm. also Anthony Richardson versus the Titans defense that – they get after it. You know, I know they've had some some struggles the first couple of weeks of the season, but at the end of the day, this is a team that, much like last week against the, the Los Angeles Rams, there's going to be a lot of pressure. They're going to get after you. Even if the Colts have yeah. all five of their starters back on the offensive line, which is Jeffrey Simmons right now, right? Right. Yeah. They have two guys in the concussion protocol. Ryan Kelly right and Raymond. Yeah. Yeah. Raymond. Uh, yeah. Two, two really, really important players. And obviously, we saw that last week with, with Aaron Donald. But even if they're <laughs> yeah. both back, Jeffrey Simmons is not someone that you bottle up completely. He's a guy you contain. You just hope that those couple times he does get back there, he's not killing your quarterback. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's really what you're hoping. And then obviously in the run game, you have Tier Tart up, up front, just a phenomenal player, Tanequa Autry. Yep. You know, it's a really good defensive line that the Titans have. And Anthony Richardson needs to continue to play well against these types of defensive lines because this is where a quarterback like him is just so valuable. That ability to stretch a defense out wide, ability to not ram everything up the middle constantly because you have a quarterback that can pull it and run outside, a guy that can escape from the pocket and make plays down the field like he did this past week. And we need to see more of Anthony Richardson in the fourth quarter last week than what we saw in quarters one and two where there was a fumble, there were some misses high, there was – you know, reasons why the Colts offense just was not able to get on track. You want to see a little bit of the combination of week one, Anthony Richardson, and then the fourth quarter of week four, Anthony Richardson, where you had the efficiency in week one, but not the explosive plays. Week four, you had only explosive plays, but not the efficiency. Let's bring that together against the Tennessee Titans team and see if this franchise quarterback that the Colts have can get us out of this like basement that we're in when it comes to the Tennessee Titans right now, because we are We have been little brother to the Tennessee Titans the last couple of years. I know there was a long time in the history of these two teams where you guys have been our little brother when it comes to this matchup. Obviously, obviously the Andrew Luck era, a lot of the Peyton Manning era. But as of right now, we're in this little bit of time where the Colts are not having a lot of success against the Tennessee Titans. It's been a lot the last couple of weeks or, or last couple of years where the Colts have not had a ton of success. Can Anthony Richardson in his rookie season against, you know, a really – big important rookie matchup can they Mm -hmm. uh can he make that next step for the indianapolis colts yeah that'll be interesting to watch and just for a specific thing that i'm looking for anthony richardson is the red zone because having a a physical running quarterback in the red zone so absolutely critical and i think the titans are going to struggle there if if they let the the Colts get to the red zone a ton because I think it's going to be very difficult to stop. I believe the Colts are top 10 in the NFL right now in red zone offense. Might even be top five um, from what I was looking yeah. at recently, but uh, it's just going to be difficult to stop that red zone attack. So the Titans have to do their best to limit the Colts from getting to the red zone. Um, and that matchup with Anthony Richardson, you're 100% right, is, is going to be critical because he can break the game in that way. For me, looking at matchups, We could talk about Jeffrey Simmons against Quentin Nelson and and the Titans defensive line. Uh, You've covered that quite a bit, and I think you're 100% right. That's obviously the key to everything for the Titans. But I think on the other side of things, I think looking at the Titans offensive line against the Indianapolis Colts because the Titans need to threaten this secondary vertically. And it's something that they've done a ton of throughout this year. Ryan Tannehill right now, second in the NFL in in ADOT, an average depth of target, 10.4 yards. Ryan Tannehill right now, highest percentage of his throws of any quarterback in the NFL, 20 yards or more with 19%. He's tied for second in the NFL in big-time throws of 20 yards or more right now with seven. Ryan Tannehill is throwing the ball down the field like he hasn't since 2019. And with the way teams creep up on the Titans and want to play forward and stop the run and the penetration in the backfield and biting on the play action, all that, that is the only way for the Titans to succeed on offense is for Tannehill to continue to challenge teams vertically. And you look at the Indianapolis Colts secondary, which I think on their defense with their good defensive line and their good set of linebackers, if you had to find a weakness 
it would be in the secondary. And they've had, obviously, some depth issues with cornerback. Right now, the Colts are the 25th ranked coverage team, according to Pro Football Focus. So I think if there is an area of opportunity to attack this Colts team, it is by attacking deep force their secondary to cover, go one-on-one with Hopkins against these cornerbacks. Hopefully you get Traylon Burks back, Chris Moore down the field. The Titans need to continue challenging vertically, and they're only going to be able to do that if they stop DeForest Buckner. (laughs) I think that with, with the edge rushers, you can send chip help. You can send a tight end, a running back. You can help Andre Dillard. You can help Chris Hubbard. It's harder to help the interior guys. And the Titans have missed rookie first-rounder Peter Skaronsky for the last three weeks due to Tennessee Titans fans. <laughs> Get a first-round rookie. The Titans' first-rounders have been disappointments for three years running. You get a first round rookie who's the best offensive lineman on your team at the weakest position you have on your team. And it's boom, awesome. Week one, he's a top 10 graded offensive lineman in the NFL, top six guard, all this. Oh, Skaronsky's a hit. <laughs> His appendix bursts the day before the game, and he's out for multiple weeks at the beginning of the season so that you can't build cohesion on the offensive line. You can't build chemistry with, again, your weakest position group on your entire team. So only. Only Titans fans just know how Titans that is right there. That, that something like that would happen. Uh, but Skaronsky could be back this week. He's going to be back at practice. Mike Rabel said he's eating better. He's He lost weight during the process and stuff like that. So he's getting back to himself. I don't think that Skaronsky can just dominate DeForest Buckner or anything like that. But I would much rather have Peter Skaronsky than Dylan Ravens to help yeah. over there. So if the left side of the Titans offensive line can slow down Quiddy Pay, can slow down DeForest Buckner to give Tannehill time to threaten that secondary down the field, I think the Titans could create some explosive pass plays. They're top 13 in the NFL right now in creating explosive pass plays. So um, I, I think the Titans could really get back to that. And you talk about that game from 2020 where the Titans kind of just jumped out early throwing the ball. Uh, I, I think the Titans could do something like that, but they're only going to have a chance to do it if up front – the offensive line gives Tannehill time to continue to attack down the field. Yeah, and, you know, Samson Ebukam has been really big this year for the Colts on one side. On the other side, Quiddy Pay has had a strong year. He's in the concussion protocol mm-hmm. right now, but Dio Dangbo just had his biggest game of his entire career. I love Dio Dangbo well. out of college. They were patient. They waited for him after the injury. I, I can't lie. I, I love that pick. So good to hear Dio Dangbo is doing good. Yeah, I think he had five QB hits last week, uh, had a sack Ooh. and a half, had a forced fumble at, in last week. Is he uh, rushing from the interior? Both. Is that Inside, Both, outside. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Good he's fun. job. Good pick. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's fun there. Uh, coming up, uh, we're going to talk about this Colts-Titans game in more detail. We're going to talk about our predictions, who we think is going to win. But first, Tyler, before we get into all that, who's the most important player for you in this game? Most important player for the Titans, if the if the Titans are going to win this game? Um, I will say the most important player in this game for the Titans is... Uh, Ryan Tannehill. I think he's going to have to hit down the field. That's what the Titans have to do. It opens up everything else. So Tannehill has to be good again. Yep. And then for the Colts, obviously Anthony Richardson is big, but I'll throw one more in there just because I want to mention him at one point. We don't know if he's going to play, but if he does play, it's such a game changer. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor could be active this week. Could be active. That's a good point. I don't think he will be, but I did just want to mention him at one point in this because there is a possibility. Shane Steichen hasn't ruled it out yet. Uh, he's mm-hmm. not talking to media yet, but he was back at practice here on Wednesday when we're recording this uh, for the walkthrough. So if he plays, that's the most important player because that's a huge, yeah, huge yeah, impact. That's a big, yeah. Yeah, right. but coming up, guys, again, we're going to talk about our predictions. We're going to all we're going to both just list the Colts' victory in great detail here, uh, me and Tyler. So coming up, that's going to be a fun conversation. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. I'm a big fan of over-unders. Uh, that's just a little easier for me. Spreads are Mm -hmm. insanely difficult. So over-unders, player props, that's a blast. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on NFL and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
And guys, this show is also sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what to do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it? Well, therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of working against yourself. I've talked about a couple times on this show, guys, I've suffered with insomnia my entire life. I've I've suffered from anxiety, depression, and sometimes you just need to go to therapy and really get yourself into a right headspace and find what works for you. So, I mean, I personally not use BetterHelp yet, but I have promo code locked on here to really help me out. I can go to locked on, uh, go go to BetterHelp slash locked on to really help me out with all that kind of stuff there. It's helpful in learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries and empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. I mean, I've never really experienced major trauma in my life, but still trauma is different in everybody. And sometimes you just need someone to talk to. And that's what BetterHelp is great at. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. All right, Tyler, so we're diving into our score predictions, or I guess before we get to score predictions, let's say what needs to go right for our teams to win this game. Obviously, again, the Titans have dominated this matchup in recent years. The Titans are coming off a really big win this past week. A lot of momentum for this team, but it is a road game in a really tough division. What do you have, you know, going right for the Titans? What do they need to get done in order to win this game against the Colts? Uh, I think they need to be uh, creative in the run game. Last week, we saw the Titans... Uh, with half of their runs, or just less than half, 14 out of 31, uh, 14 out of 31 runs came out of shotgun. You add in another six runs out of pistol, now you're talking about two-thirds mm-hmm. of the Titans' runs were not from under center. I think that's huge to evolve the run game. We saw 21. The Titans, are the Titans as a gap or a zone team, Zach? <sighs> Man, they've typically been zone, haven't they? They've typically they were. Been yeah, for the they were last four years. Zone. 21 of their 31 runs were gap last okay. week with pullers and down blocks. And it's different than what than what they have been doing. They they still have the zone runs in the back, but they're evolving so that they have other answers and other counters to the way teams are playing them, which I am very happy with the progress of new offensive coordinator Tim Kelly. He was promoted in the offseason. I think he's been a revelation compared to Todd Downing, who the Titans had the last two years. Um, just being willing to adjust, being willing to try that cheat motion, ch- that cheat motion, that short motion that all the teams are running now, um, where you have a guy just go in motion like 10 yards before the snap. So he's at a running start. Uh, it's kind of Canadian football, Kyle Shanahan was saying, but either way, um, uh, like stuff like that, Tim Kelly is introducing into the Titans offense and they're copying and running. And that's just innovation and even copying what's working in the NFL that the Titans offense hasn't done in quite some time. So the Titans are evolving. They need to continue to do that to attack the four-man fronts that they typically get from the Colts. And if they can have success in the run game, it'll allow them more opportunity to take those downfield chances that I talked about earlier because the Colts' pass rush won't have their ears pinned back. So the Titans definitely need to be able to continue to show creativity in the run game and run the football with success. But for me, more than anything, it's about defense. And with a young quarterback in Anthony Richardson who didn't have a ton of experience in college even coming in, I think the Titans disguise coverages, rolling safeties up and down, invert cover two when you're showing a single high look, doing all those things, having your safety come down as the robber into the middle of the field and run invert cover two with a corner on that side. The Titans need to disguise coverages. They need to confuse Anthony Richardson. When we talk about rookie quarterbacks seeing looks, that they haven't seen before, just getting used to him. This is a game where Anthony Richardson says, I've never seen some of that before. And and ultimately, you hope that it allows him to improve. But I think for the Titans to win this game, they need to trick Richardson into a few turnovers, a few interceptions. And um, in the past, the Titans have seemed to come up with some big plays in those circumstances against the Colts. So I think the Titans' safety group of Kevin Byard and Imani Hooker find a way to confuse Richardson and, and pick him off over the middle of the field once or twice. Look, as long as it's not a left-handed interception on a screen pass on the own one-yard line, it can't be much worse than what we've seen here in Indy the last couple of years. (laughs) Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. 
For the Colts to go right in this one, I think I kind of touched on it quite a bit with my two points earlier in the show. It's got to win the trench play. Like again, you don't you don't beat the Tennessee Titans unless you win the trenches. We've seen in their games this year, last week in Cincinnati Bengals, they demolished the Bengals up front on both sides of the ball. It was the best game that the Titans have played on both sides of the ball in their trenches yep. all year, and that's the reason why they won that game big. But then you go the week before that against the Cleveland Browns, mm-hmm. they got crushed in the trenches all day long. It was just they could get nothing going on either side of the ball in the trenches. And at the end of the day, it was a beat down the other way. So for the Colts to really have a chance to win this game and to really get out of this Titan shadow they've been in the last couple of years, they need to win the trench play. That is more important than anything else in this game. And then secondary is obviously what we're going to get from Anthony Richardson. I think it's been a really solid start for him this year. Uh, we could obviously go into the nuance of all the analytics where it's like, yeah, the completion percentage is low. Explosive plays are high, though. Overall, the net right. total of what you've the got The CPEO him. is low, man. Yeah. He's inaccurate. He's bad, you know? Right. right. Yeah, but then funny. QBR and EPA per play and all that, it's around average, below average, mm-hmm. which is really yeah. good for a 22-year-old starter in the NFL. Like, a really, yeah, yeah, really yeah, good yeah. start for him. He's off to a really good start for the Colts. Let Seven me just say downs. this right here. You know, you, if for the Titans, you see Anthony Richardson, it may be a slow burn. He may need to progress, but I'm definitely like, oh, no. Stroud is really good. Richardson has showed that he might be pretty good, too. Like, oh, no. You know what I mean? So not to cut you off there, but I, I just, I get what you're saying. Is There's no reason to be upset right now. Right, right. So it's just about continuing that progression there. But again, He's not going to get it done unless the Colts win the trenches in this one. So if we're really talking about what the Colts need to go right, it's the trench warfare first. And then obviously Anthony Richardson can bring out some magic like he did last week. Maybe do it for more of the game. But obviously, again, he almost had just enough magic to win that one last week against the Rams in a game they really shouldn't have won. Uh, But uh, Tyler, thank you for joining the show today. It's been a blast talking this game. I always love the matchups between Colts and Titans. What do you have as your score prediction? How much do you have the Colts winning by? Because I know, obviously, the Colts are going to win by a ton. What, what, how much do you have the Colts winning? <laughs> how much do you have the Colts right, winning right, by? Right, right. <laughs> uh, so, in this game, again, I, I think the, the Colts are a good team. I think the second game that the Titans play against the Colts, you're going to see a better version of the Colts just because it's just natural that Richardson, I think this is a learning game for Anthony Richardson that, you know, there you, you don't take losses, you take lessons. And I think this might be a lesson game for Anthony Richardson. I think it'll be close, but I think the Titans do get a couple of those turnovers, um, just kind of doing what they do on defense. They've gotten a lot of opportunities early on. I think they'll find a way to create more of those against a young quarterback. I'm going to go with the Titans 23 to Colts 17, 23-17. I could see it. And, you know, for me, it's kind of tough to make a prediction right now because there's so much riding on the Colts injury status yeah. going to this game. Tentative predictions, we'll yeah. call them. Yeah. I always yeah. reaffirm on Friday. Right. We got Bernard Ryman, who's out right now in concussion protocol. We have Ryan Kelly, who's out in the concussion protocol. Quiddy Pay in the concussion protocol. DeForest Buckner yeah. was limited last week. Grover Stewart didn't play the last drive of last week's game either, Ooh. which if you don't have Grover yeah. Stewart in this he's match, really, it's yeah. yeah, you're, you're in trouble. He's yeah, he's so good. I can't believe we went the whole episode without mentioning him with all the Derrick Henry stuff. I'm glad that you got his name in there at the end because he's not a name that everybody would know, but Grover Stewart, like I would say, like, uh, like DJ Reader, for the Bengals mm-hmm. last week, you know, similar thing there. Grover Stewart has been huge as a run stuffer for the Colts. Yeah, and then obviously the the biggest um, one to look at here is Jonathan Taylor. If Jonathan yep. Taylor plays, that's a difference maker of, of a game there. But as of right now here on Wednesday, I do like what the Colts have been doing lately. I, I hope they can build off what they were doing in that fourth quarter. I think it's mm-hmm. going to be a tough, grinded out game. And if I'm assuming that DeForest Buckner is healthy for this game and plays, you know, majority of the snaps like he usually does, I'll have the Colts winning this one. 24 23 like a really really tight game yep. again these mm-hmm. are two teams that are kind of on the similar type of range of where they are right now obviously yep. getting it done in different ways the titans a more experienced battle-tested team the colts younger energetic like you know explosive inconsistent uh but net the net total is around the same with both these teams so really fun team to watch really fun game coming up colts titans you guys can watch that over this weekend if you guys don't already make sure you're following at locked on colts at Locked on Titans or at Tic Tac Titans is where. Yeah, uh, sadly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long story we don't have time for, but at Tic Tac Titans, not at Locked on Titans. Right. We'll get into it one day in the summer. Right, right. At Jake Arthur Valen, at Zach Hicks, too, all on Twitter. Also, subscribe to YouTube or wherever you listen to our podcast. We'd love your guys' ratings, reviews, and we'll see you guys back here bright and early tomorrow morning.